Hello everyone, this is Takahui Tegawa. This article includes people's decision-making bias. Knowing that you have a bias in your decision-making can increase your chances of reducing the discomfort caused by that bias. I am sure some of the examples apply to you. Please feel free to ask them, thinking that they might apply to you. So let's get started. First, an overview of the content of this article. There are many biases in the way people make decisions. In this video, after introducing the idea that people's decisions are biased, I will explain seven typical biases. The first bias is called anchoring. Anchoring is a term that describes how our decisions are influenced by information they have previously received. The second bias is called availability heuristic. A heuristic is a process by which people make decisions quickly by simplifying the processing of information they have received. The availability heuristic is the decision-making tendency to rely on information that is commonly seen. The third bias is known as the representativeness bias. The representativeness bias is the decision-making tendency to attribute impressions of an object to a particular category or groups to which the object belongs. The fourth bias is called unrealistic optimism. Unrealistic optimism is a decision-making bias that leads people to believe that they and the Organizations they belong to are more idealistic than others. The fifth bias is known as loss aversion. Loss aversion is the decision-making tendency to find losses twice as painful as gains. The sixth bias is known as the status quo bias. The sixth bias is known as the status quo bias. The status quo bias is a decision-making bias that fears change and prefers business as usual. The seventh bias is called framing. Framing is a decision-making bias where people have different impressions of the same content depending on how it is communicated. In addition to the seven biases presented in this video, there are many others. The reference material for this video is Nudge by Richard Saylor and Cass Sustain. Let me introduce you to the fact that people's decisions are biased. First, Look at the picture of the two desks. Are they the same size? Or is the desk on the left square and the one on the right more elongated and narrower? How do they look to you? The desk on the right seems longer and narrower to me. In fact, those two desks have the same shape. I did the illustrations of those two desks. I created the left desk first, rotated its top without changing its shape, and then reversed the left and right sides to illustrate the right desk. This bias in information processing is not limited to vision. 
we interpret the information we receive in a biased way and we make biased decision. Let me now give you some typical examples of our decision-making bias. First, let's talk about anchoring. Anchoring is the term that describes how people are influenced by previous information. For example, consider the case of multiplying the integer 1 to 8. Experiments have shown that the average predicted value of the result of the calculation was 512. When the numbers were multiplying, sequentially starting from 1. Conversely, the average predicted value of the result of the calculation when the numbers were multiplied sequentially starting from 8 was 2250. Since the value to be multiplied are the same, the result of the calculation should be the same whether the, you start from 1 or 8. However, the predicted value was very different depending on how large or small the starting numbers were. This is the phenomenon of decision being influenced by previous information and is known as anchoring. Incidentally, the result of the multiplying integers from 1 to 8 is 40,320. Let's look at another example of an anchoring experiment. The correlation coefficient between happiness and frequency of dating was low when the happiness question was asked first and then the frequency of dating. On the other hand, when the frequency of dating was asked first and then the happiness question, those correlations were higher. In other words, when the happiness question was asked after recalling things that lead to happiness, respondents remembered the date when answering the happiness question resulting in a higher happiness response. As these examples show, people's judgment is influenced by the information they received immediately before. The next decision by us introduced is the availability heuristic. A heuristic is a, is a process by which people make decisions quickly by simplifying the processing of information they receive. And their availability heuristic is their decision-making tendency to rely on information that is commonly seen. In US, which is the greater number of people killed with a gun in a year, or the greater number of people who committed suicide with a gun, it is easy to get the impression that the number of people killed is higher, but suicide are almost twice as common. Information about shooting and the other incident is replied through various media, such as television, the internet, the newspapers. On the other hand, Gun-related suicide are not often broadcast. In other words, the information we receive in our daily lives is biased. And because of this bias, our impressions are also biased. The next decision-making bias we will discuss is the representativeness bias. Representativeness by us refers to the decision-making tendency to attribute impressions of an object to a particular category or group to which the object belongs. 
It is also known as the similarity heuristic. Let's start by reading the description of Linda. Linda is 31 years old, single, articulate, and very intelligent. She studies psychology at the university. During her teenage year, she was very interested in issues such as gender and social justice and was involved in anti-nuclear demonstrations. Which of following attributes of Linda's is more appropriate, A or B? A. Linda is now a banker. B. Linda is now a bank teller and passionate about the feminist movement. Which of Linda's attribute did you think was more attribute, A or B? We know that B is more likely to be chosen. However, B is more limited attribute than A, and B is part of A. In other words, A is more valid than B, as a sentence describing Linda's attributes. However, we tend to choose B, which is closer to our impression of Linda. This decision by us is the representativeness by us. The next decision making by us is called unrealistic optimism. Unrealistic optimism is a decision making by us that leads people to believe that they and the organization they belong to are closer to an ideal than others. Unrealistic optimism has the following characteristics. First, we tend to interpret prediction errors optimistically. We tend to predict outcomes of our engagements that are more favorable than realistic possibilities. For example, we tend to predict that we will outperform others in exam performance or project success. Second, we tend to underestimate the risks we face. For example, smokers tend to underestimate the risks of health problems from smoking and people living in areas with heavy rainfall tend to underestimate the risk of river flooding. We also tend to have unrealistically high self-esteem. We tend to think of ourselves as more capable and more likely to success than others. As a concrete example, consider an entrepreneur with a new business idea. Influenced by unrealistic optimism, the entrepreneur tends to overestimate the likelihood of success and underestimate the difficulties and risks. As a result, the business plans and strategies may become unrealistic and they may not make appropriate decisions about their chances of success or future risks. While and realistic optimism encourages people to act confidently and pursue opportunities. It can also lead them to overlook realistic risks and make poor decisions. The fifth bias is known as loss aversion. Loss aversion refers to the decision-making tendency to find losses twice as painful as gain. In other words, the loss aversion refers to people's tendency to minimize losses to avoid risk. Here are some examples of loss aversion. First, loss aversion in investment is presented here. Investors tend to choose safe asset or low-risk investments to minimize risk. 
they tend to avoid investments with high return potential, but also high risk. Next, loss aversion in consumer behavior is introduced. Consumers tend to choose goods and service with guarantees of safety and quality. To avoid losses, they tend to choose products that they feel are more reliable and of guaranteed quality than new products. Loss aversion is based on people's instinct to protect their resources and interests. However, excessive loss aversion can lead to missed opportunities and constrained growth. The sixth bias is known as the status quo bias. The status quo bias is the decision-making bias that fears change and prefers business as usual. Status quo bias has the following characteristics. First, the status quo bias is characterized by resistance to change. People tend to avoid change and risk. They prefer to stick with familiar situations and methods and tend to resist new ideas and options. Cognitive expediency is also a feature of status quo bias. There is a tendency in our decision-making process to try to reduce cognitive load and cognitive uncertainty by maintaining existing information and situations. Examples include the following situations. We tend to always sit in the same seat in the university classroom or sit in the same seat on a free access floor in the company. Status quo bias can also manifest itself in people's tendency to maintain habits and routines. For example, if they are used to going to a particular restaurant or cafe, they may avoid trying new places or new menus. Status quo bias also affects investment and financial decisions. People tend to resist changing their existing investment and financial strategies and try to maintain their existing portfolios and strategies to avoid risk. This can lead to missing out, out on new investment opportunities and effective financial strategies. There is a tendency to try to maintain existing situations and options because they reduce cognitive load and provide a sense of stability and security. The seventh bias is called framing. Framing is a decision-making bias in which the same contents is communicated in different ways to create different impressions. This way of communicating is called framing. Here is an example of positive framing. For example, people are more likely to undergo a medical procedure with a 90% success rate than one with a 10% failure rate. That was our introduction to human decision bias. See you all in another video. Thank you for watching.